Okay, so now we're going to do the second video in the trauma series. And in this one we're going to look at the secondary survey and the different trauma area, different trauma protocols. So we already covered the primary survey, which we called A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And if you don't know what those are, go watch the first video. Now we're going to do the secondary survey, which consists of the history and physical. So if you'll remember, the primary survey were all the factors that if you didn't address these things immediately, the patient was probably going to die. So those are things that had to be done right away. The secondary survey is an attempt to find all the potential disasters that are there. Not ones that necessarily are going to kill them right away. They may be subtle, they may be difficult to find, but you have to find these things, otherwise it could be detrimental to the patient. So you have to have a systematic approach to the history and physical. So, first let's look at the history, and this is what we call the ample history because that's the first letters of everything that's in there and this tries to get all the pertinent information you need in a very short way so A obviously stands for allergies M is medications P is all the past medical stuff past medical history past surgical history etc L is the last meal because you want to know the last time that they ate something and E stands for the events surrounding the incident. And this is obviously the most important part because the mechanism of injury can dictate really what kind of injuries you're going to look for. And so you could basically ask the patient what happened and he might say I got shot or I got stabbed or I was in a car crash. But you want to know a little bit more. What they get shot with, what they get stabbed with, who shot them or the mechanism of injury of the car crashes. So let's look at car crashes, blunt injury for a second and get some good uh, historical factors. So things you're going to want to ask is how fast was the car going? What did it hit? And at what part of the car got hit? And if it was struck by another car, then you also want to know where on the car that car uh, hit the victim's car. Was it on the, the front? Was it the rear? Was it the passenger side door or the driver side door? Was it the rear quarter panel, the front quarter panel, etc.? And a lot of times, you know, this, the patients might not know how fast they were going or it happened so fast, they don't really know how fast they were hit. And so you can get some idea, an estimate of that, by asking them what their car looks like. And if you ask them, how fast did that person who hit you, who rear-ended you, how fast did they go? And they'll say, oh man, they were going really fast. And you can ask them, well, what the, what's your car look like right now? And he goes, oh, well, the, the back bumper's got a small dent in it. So it really couldn't have been going that fast if all it's got is a small dent in it. On the other hand, if they say that their car flipped over and rolled over, well, they probably were going pretty fast or were pr hit pretty hard. Or if someone was thrown from the vehicle and decapitated, you know that was a high mechanism injury. And if you can't get any information from the patient, you could also ask uh, other bystanders or even uh, the EMS personnel that picked them up or any police who were at the scene and accompanied them to the emergency department. So this is our ample history. You want to get this history on every trauma patient. Now let's look at the physical. So now let's do a head-to-toe physical. So on the head, look for any signs of trauma, look for any lacerations, skull fractures, or extruding uh, brain contents. Uh, they may have uh, raccoon eyes, which is bruising around the eyes, or they may even have some bruising behind the ears called a battle sign, which are both markers for a basal or skull fracture. Also, you want to palpate along the mandible and the facial bones to look for any tenderness. The neck itself is broken up into three zones. The first one, zone one, goes from the cricoid cartilage all the way to the thoracic inlet. Zone two goes from the uh, cricoid to the angle of the mandible. And zone three goes from the angle of the mandible all the way to the base of the skull. So in the neck, look for any tracheal deviation, look for any JVD, and also feel for any crepitance, for any subcutaneous emphysema. In the back of the neck, you want to also feel for any uh, pain along the cervical spine. In the chest here, you're going to look for any uh, contusions, you're going to look for any lacerations, watch respiratory efforts, see if they're breathing okay, bilateral breath sounds are symmetric, listen for the heart tones, and again, feel for any crepitance, for any subcutaneous emphysema. The abdomen and pelvis, again, you want to look for similar things. Look for bruising, look for any penetrating injuries. Also look for any peritoneal signs. From the rectum, you want to see if there's any gross blood. We're not doing guaiac testing. We're not screening for colon cancer, but just see if there's any gross blood coming from there. Also, uh, in the pelvis, 
look for any blood at the urethra and in women again look at do a speculum exam of the vagina to make sure that there's no bleeding or lacerations in there in the extremities you want to do again the same thing look for any penetrating injury any bruising any deformity any open fractures look for any tenderness and of course you want to feel for pulses and sensation, look for neurovascular status of each one of the extremities, and check all the compartments. Make sure there's no compartment syndrome that's developing there. And then along the back, you want to feel up and down the TLS spine and make sure that they have no tenderness uh, along their spine and make sure they have good neurologic status. Again, looking for spinal cord injuries. So remember, during your physical exam, you're just trying to find any areas which might be any source of tenderness, pain, bleeding in an attempt to try to find any and all of the injuries. So let me give you rule number one of your trauma evaluation. And that is, every hole gets a finger or tube in it. And so what this really means is make sure, you don't really have to stick a finger in too many, but make sure that you look at everything. Look inside the ears for hemotympanum. Look inside, look at the urethra for any bleeding. A rectal exam. Remember to look inside the mouth, look inside the nose, look inside the vagina, look inside every hole that you can find. And since we're talking about these rules, let's go on to rule number two, which says that the number of gunshot holes plus the number of bullets inside the patient is an even number. And think about it. Either a gunshot goes in and then out, so you have two gunshot holes, so that's going to be two, or the bullet goes in and then it stays inside. So you have one thing, one bullet inside and one hole outside. And so even number. There are exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, this reminds you that if you see one bullet hole, go look for more bullet holes or go find a bullet inside the patient. And since we're talking about bullets, uh, let's talk about uh, the two different questions you want to ask with every trauma patient, with every kind of trauma. And that is, number one, what kind of trauma it is and where is the trauma? And the kind of trauma is going to be broken down really into two types, blunt and penetrating. And so types of blunt trauma would be things like falls, uh, getting beat up, getting assaulted, car crashes, and penetrating would be stab wounds or uh, gunshots typically. And as for where, you're really asking uh, what part of the body is the injury. So is it in the head? Is it in the belly? Is it in the back or the leg? And so the idea here is that when you know where the injury is, you know which organs you need to assess. So let's look at some of these areas. The first one is the head. And so the main thing that you're worried about inside the head is the brain. So if you have blunt injury to the head, you're worried about the brain, or penetrating injury to the head, you're worried about the brain. And what's the main way you're going to look at the brain? It's going to be a CT scan, right? Of course. And so are you going to CT scan anybody with a penetrating wound to the head? Well, what if you stab someone in the head with a pencil? Obviously, they don't need a CT scan, but a gunshot to the head, well, yeah, they do. Uh, or blunt injury to the head. If someone gets slammed in the head with a a newspaper, that's technically blunt trauma. They don't need a CT, but if they get hit in the head and they have loss of consciousness or they have a skull fracture, maybe those guys do. So you can see where the mechanism of injury becomes very important here. We talked before about the neck and there being three zones. Uh, we'll just look at it as one thing right now. And the main things that are going to be inside here are blood vessels, the esophagus, and the trachea. And so this might need an esophagoscopy, this might need a bronchoscopy, and you might not have to do an angiogram on these. Uh, penetrating wound to the neck, some people just take them to the OR because there's just too much stuff in there that's so densely packed together that can be damaged. And exploration, surgical exploration, may be needed. Next, let's look at the chest, which is this here, and really in there is the heart and lungs. However, let's actually subdivide this further into something called the anterior cardiac box, which is where the heart is involved. So go in between the nipples, uh, between that notch there, and the costal margins. So any trauma in this area, you have to worry about the heart. Any trauma in the area outside there, you got to worry about the lungs. So think about it. Penetrating chest trauma, you're worried about the lungs here. What are you going to do? You might want to do a chest x-ray to look at that. What about blunt trauma to the to the uh, lungs. You also might want to do another chest x-ray to make sure there's no pulmonary contusion developing. Penetrating trauma to the chest, you may want to do an echo, and same even with blunt trauma to the chest, to look at the heart, see if you're getting any uh, tamponade or bleeding there. And you also have to worry about the aorta, 
in this blunt trauma too, and what we call acceleration deceleration injury. So the aorta is tethered to the spine in one portion, but not tethered at another portion. So during a quick acceleration or deceleration, such as when you crash into something, this part may stop moving as the body stops moving, but inertia may pull this part forward. So you may get an aortic tear. Now obviously if you have a tear that gets through the entire aorta, that person's going to exsanguinate and die at the scene. So those are not the guys we're going to save. It's the ones that have the little small tears and the bleeding gets encapsulated in the adventitia. Well, if you do an angiogram there quickly, you might be able to catch it quickly and then repair it. But you don't want to wait too long because you know that thing's just going to explode and bleed out all over the place. This thing is a ticking time bomb. Another area you have to worry about is the thoracoabdominal area, and that goes from the bottom and to the top of the costal margins. And the organ that's in there that you're worried about is the diaphragm. The boundaries of the abdomen are... Uh, pretty obvious, as are the extremities, and you can have blunt and penetrating trauma to both of these areas as well. And there are areas on the back, similarly there's the chest area and a posterior box which has the same upper and lower boundaries but otherwise is in between the scapula, and that's also for the heart as well as the aorta. The thoracoabdominal aorta of course extends here to the back. And there's a back and flank area which involves all the retroperitoneal structures, like the kidneys, pancreas, etc. So that kind of just gives you a brief overview of different areas that exist on uh, the, the patient. So again, remember, we're looking for what kind of trauma, and that's going to be blunt or penetrating, and also where the trauma is on the body after we go through all these various zones. And that's going to help us determine what kind of workup we want to do. So in later videos, we'll examine some of these, the workups that you would involve for some of these zones. But right now, let's summarize here. Previously, we talked about the primary survey, and in this video, we talked about the secondary survey, including our history, which is an ample history, which is allergies, medications, past medical stuff, last meal, and events. And in our physical exam, which is a head-to-toe physical, looking for any and all injuries. And once you find those injuries, you want to ask yourself two questions. The kind of trauma, blunt versus penetrating, and where on the body it is. And from there, we can determine what kind of workup we need to do. All right, see you next time.